dear Secretary General Lamberto Zanier, dear Minister Simkowski, dear Ambassador Nickel representing the German Chairmanship in office, dear Ambassador Perman, dear Katja representing the chair or being the chair of the Human Dimension Committee, excellencies, distinguished guests from the diplomatic community, but also dear then distinguished members of parliaments, and last not least, dear members of the staff, those in the end who carry out all the work. Janovi Panstvo, Vitame, welcome to Odier's anniversary, 25 years since we have been founded. Welcome to all of you. I thank you for being with us this evening to celebrate the 25 years that the OSCE Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights has worked from its headquarters here in Warsaw to support all OSCE participating states to fulfill their human dimension commitments. Welcome also to this beautiful building, the Pałac Miocijewskiego, a place full of history. You are here in one of the most beautiful rooms, the most beautiful, in my opinion, of this Pałac, of this palace. And it's a place where Catholic bishops over the centuries were living, where Russian governors ruled over an occupied Poland, where Polish culture flourished as Frédéric Chopin gave one of his first public concerts in this very ballroom. Some say it was the very first, but if I add all those who say it was the very first, um, I think he must have been a multiple identity. In every case, what is guaranteed, it is one of the places where he had one of his first concerts, but also, of course, a place of very, very, very sad times, a place which, as most of ancient Warsaw, was rebuilt from scratch after the German Wehrmacht destroyed it during the Warsaw Uprising, or to be more precise, also after it, uh, after it was been brutally, of course, ended. Therefore, in this very building, a lot of things coincide, culture, politics, history, ups and downs, of course, of history, and in these times, which are really turbulent, uh, if I only mentioned last week without commenting in any way, we see how turbulent also the things are we are living today, the times that we are living today, and I wonder how historians one day will look on these times, but we have it in our hands to make it, to bring it forward. Therefore, the human dimension of the OECE is one of the key elements we have in hand to positively bring forward history in the making and democracy at work. The human dimension of security that is the very much what we are working here. The human dimension of security, that is what makes us unique in OSCE because we have this comprehensive concept of security where political military security, economic cooperation, and human dimension, human rights are so uh, indispensably linked to each other. Your presence here today in support of this work we do in the human dimension is therefore very much appreciated that all of us within the OECE have come together to recognize the significance of ODIA's contribution to making the region more democratic is significant. And let me say very clearly, of course, this ideal of this comprehensive aspect and approach to security, this ideal continues, unfortunately, to be under threat. As often already in these 25 years, but now, of course, very much because we see and hear without going into details, very often, sometimes voices who say, well, maybe the human dimension is not so important, maybe we should focus more on other aspects, and not so much, of course, on what is happening internally in the different places. Well, we think it is very important, and that is one of the reasons why ODIA was founded 25 years ago, that it is absolutely important that we all have an obligation, all 57 states, when it comes to human rights aspects and problems, of course, in other places in, of these 57. We have been founded as the Office for Free Elections. That was the first name. And, of course, today we have developed in the largest uh, of these so-called executive structures of the OECE, of these autonomous institutions, well, and autonomous, especially not being independent of the OECE, we are part of the OECE, but of course we implement our mandate, of course, in an autonomous way, in an impartial and independent way, today with over 150 staff representing most of our region, 
over 150 people working from 35 states, sometimes a little bit more. I would ideally like to have 57 participating states, but that's something to work on. Last year, the OSCE itself as a whole celebrated 40 years since the signing of the Helsinki Final Act and 25 years since the Charter of Paris. In Paris, states agreed to create a body with an independent mandate to impartially assess and assist the creation and strengthening of democratic institutions, especially, of course, to begin with elections in the post-communist world, those thus they created Odir. But it is by far not only the post-communist world, it is a 360 degree view, of course, what is at the very base of our activities. We are equally, of course, uh, uh, concerned and following, uh, of course, developments in all participating states. For the past 25 years, the ODIA expert team has actively executed its mandate. Every year we observe many elections. We work in cooperation with states to improve the laws and democratic institutions. We monitor human rights and fundamental freedoms. We support non-discrimination and inclusion programs and report on hate crimes. And we work to improve the situation of Roma and Sinti communities. We do all this and much more in close cooperation with other OSCE the structures, other OCE, uh, parts of the OCE, especially with the Secretariat. The two, of course, also other institutions in the human dimension, meaning the representative of for the freedom of the media based in Vienna and the High Commissioner on National Minorities based in The Hague. The field office, the numerous ones which are so important partners for us and where we, we just talked about that, dear Lamberto, uh, where we constantly think where we can Im improve the cooperation with these experts, of course, on the spot in the field. And last not least, the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly, which is about to have its annual meeting next week in Georgia. And uh, I cannot underline enough the importance of this parliamentary cooperation. We also work closely with numerous international and NGO partners. We have, over the years, enjoyed the support of numerous OSCE chairmanships. And this year, Germany has provided very concrete and reliable backing for our work in the human dimension, especially in times when our mandate is being questioned by some and where the OSCE as a whole has to rise to new challenges, for example, in the crisis in and around Ukraine or as our open and inclusive societies are being threatened by rising intolerance including anti-Semitism, we look to our chairmanship, but also the broader OSCE community of participating states for continued support of ODIA's role. Thank you for joining us tonight to recognize this office and the work it's done throughout its years, and especially to recognize the work of the people working here. Uh, what you see here today is the result of hundreds and hundreds of people working at ODIA over the last 25 years. A lot of directors, heads of departments, uh, in the many years before I had the privilege, of course, to come um, to be the director of ODIR, all this is the result of, well, I would even say generations of work, and I try my very best, together with our team, to preserve that and to adapt it, of course, to the needs of today in a changing world where certainly threats are not uh, becoming less. We are here, of course, today to celebrate with you. Therefore, it will certainly not only be speeches. We will have, of course, now some very, very, well, closest colleagues, of course, of us taking the floor, which are all of them for Odia's work absolutely crucial and important. I'm very glad that, first of all, our Secretary General, Lamberto Zanier, will take the floor. We'll be followed by the representative, of course, of our host country, of the Republic of Poland. Minister Stemkowski is with us today, and I'm glad, of course, that you will address us today directly, and we are glad to work, to live, and to serve in Poland. And followed after that by the representative of the chairmanship in office, Ambassador Rolf Nickel is here today with us. I'm glad, very glad that we, that we see each other again. Um, and uh, of course, thanks also for the very close cooperation with the German chairmanship. And, Last, not least, because here we come to the concrete work, is the Human Dimension Committee. To all those of you, of course, who are not so familiar with the Vienna talk, the Human Dimension Committee is the very committee where all human dimension issues are being, well, not only dealt with, but especially prepared, where 
where impulse is being given, where special highlights can be given, where we develop new ideas, um, also new projects, of course, thanks to its chair, Kat Ambassador Katja Perman of Finland. We are very glad, of course, that uh, you will be also addressing us. Before we, after this one, this part, go to the more informal one, which be, will be downstairs in the courtyard, where, of course, there will be uh, uh, some possibility to get a refreshment, to get something to grasp, of course, to eat, but where we will have the privilege, of course, also to listen to music, both classical and jazz, and especially have the good, con good conversations in this evening, um, as we have a one day without football, where we can concentrate on some other talks before all concentration, Minister Stemkowski is already eagerly waiting before full concentration is going to, uh, going to the match uh, Poland-Portugal tomorrow evening. And certainly, as always, we are impartial. But nevertheless, you can think that uh, many fingers will be crossed maybe for one of these uh, plays, having in mind that most of the people working here, of course, are Polish citizens. So thank you very much for listening to these brief opening statements and also, of course, to a very, very personal welcome to all of you. I pass the floor to our Secretary General. Lamberto, the floor is yours. Thank you, Michael. Deputy Minister Stankowski, Director Link, Ambassador Nickel, Ambassador Perman, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the 25th anniversary of the OSC Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights offers a welcome opportunity to acknowledge and celebrate its important efforts to promote democratic institutions, human rights, fundamental freedoms, and the rule of law throughout the OSC region. It is an appropriate moment to reflect on this achievement, but also to look at its future. The OSC Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights has come, to, uh, has come a long way since the Charter of Paris for a New Europe established an office for three elections in Warsaw to facilitate contacts and the exchange of information on elections with participating states. And I was mentioning earlier to uh, Director Link how I vividly remember still coming to uh, Warsaw myself in, in 93, where I met uh, uh, Director Cortez, then the first director of, of ODIR, uh, with a staff of maybe a dozen people and a really small office. So I think we can uh, really see now how over the years ODIR has developed into and developed into the leading institution for election observation in the OSC area. Its working methodology in this field enjoys worldwide recognition and is considered the gold standard of election observation. But more than that, ODIR has become a well-respected champion of human rights, democratic principles, and the rule of law. Today, the office is instrumental in supporting the OSC's 57 participating states, safeguard their human dimension commitments. ODIR is also critical when it comes to integrating a human rights-based approach into programs and activities run by other OSC executive structures in line with the OSC comprehensive concept of security. And this 25th anniversary is therefore a significant day for all of us in the OSC family. Over the year, ODIR has demonstrated flexibility, a, uh, I would say a feature uh, for the whole organization in fact, uh, to adapting to changing and often challenging circumstances. Today, ODIR is again facing obstacles and its work is not always appreciated as it could, as is, in fact, as it should be. Doubt has been cast on continued adherence of a number of participating states to establish commitments and practices in areas such as electoral standards and freedom of expression. Reports of shrinking democratic space, increasing pressures on, on uh, civil society and threats to human rights defenders give cause for concern. And against the backdrop of a deteriorating security environment, there is a high risk for further erosions in the fulfillment of core human dimension commitments. ODIR has responded to these growing challenges by raising awareness, sharing best practices, giving advice, and conducting training. 
initiatives such as the 2014 OSC guidelines on the protection of human rights defenders, or the 2015 project for strengthening dialogue between governments and civil society in Ukraine, among many others, demonstrate that ODIS delivers added value on relevant issues of the day. In the context of the migration and refugee crisis, ODIS human rights monitoring, in particular its experience with tolerance and non-discrimination issues, are among the strengths that the OSC can draw upon as it seeks to build a more coordinated and joined up approach. ODIR can also help ensure that efforts to counter violent extremism and terrorism are in line with our human rights obligations. The OSC United in Countering Violent Extremism campaign is a good example of a common cross-dimensional effort. Although the challenges are mounting, ODIR, along with the other OSC executive structures, needs to cope with declining resources, diminishing our effectiveness. Prioritization has been part of the answer to this persistent squeeze on resources, but the OSC's potential is being underutilized at a time where more active engagement could make a, substan a substantial difference to security and to cooperation in Europe. ODIR's long-standing close ties with civil society are a big advantage and lie at the heart of many of ODIR's achievements. The Human Dimension Implementation Meeting, the HDIM, is Europe's largest annual human rights conference, bringing together government officials, international experts, civil society representatives, and human rights activists. This is remarkable, but also entails a number of organizational challenges. When speaking time allotments go down to three minutes, it becomes difficult to hold a meaningful conversation. The current reform discussion is therefore both necessary and positive, as long as it is conducted with an open mind and in good faith. There is a clear need to adapt the format to modern requirements, but also to preserve the meeting as a platform for open debate on the human rights situation in the OSC area. Every year, each team points to shortcomings in the fulfillment of OSCE commitments, raising our awareness, but also pushing us to take relevant action in order to ensure lasting peace and security. All participating states should be interested in a more systematic follow-up. If moving the dates for the meeting to spring could help us progress in that direction, we should consider this. I myself have found it difficult to attend the HDIM of which often coincides with the opening of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. But allow me to say a word of caution about suggestions to move the entire meeting to a different location. HDIM is an OSC flagship event closely associated with the city of Warsaw, so it is in our best interest to keep it where it is. Concerns that have been raised about access to HDIM can and should be addressed through other means and it is crucial that access is open and it allows for inclusive participation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now five years that ODIR has been working from these privileged premises in the heart of Warsaw. This building is a visible expression of the strong commitment of Poland to the OSC and in particular its attachment to the human dimension. And I had today a very uh, positive meeting uh, with the Foreign Minister of Poland where we discussed also the steps forward and, and the progress towards uh, uh, finalization of, uh, uh, of an quarters agreement. As head of the OSC Secretariat, which enjoys a similarly favorable location in Vienna, but also as a guest this evening, I can fully appreciate the significance of this gesture. I therefore thank our Polish hosts for their wonderful hospitality, as well as Director Link and the entire ODIR team for the excellent cooperation and for the close working relations that we will further intensify as we move forward together. Thank you very much, thanks to all of you. Mr. Secretary General, Director, Mr. Director, Excellencies, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. At the beginning, I would like to sincerely thank Director Michal Link, Georg Link, for, organiza for organizing 
today's evening, which celebrates the 25th anniversary of the Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights in Warsaw, the biggest autonomous institution within the OSC. I have emphasized several times, and I would like to do it once again on this special occasion, that the human dimension is a fundamental and indispensable component of the OEC comprehensive concept of security. In order to achieve lasting peace and the security in the re region of and worldwide, it is imperative to fully embrace the wide array of human causes. Ladies and gentlemen, the relation between the two major concepts of on which ODIR activities are focused, human rights and the democracy, is a particularly complex, closely correlated, if not inseparable one. Unfortunately, we have to acknowledge that in some countries within the OSC area, we still witness blatant violations of the fundamental rights or tragic or tragic consequences of the international law violations, which appear to be conducted so easily in case of democratic institutions. Therefore, our cooperation in the third dimension has become more cru crucial than ever. In this respect, ODIR's role is truly invaluable. Since its establishment in 1991, the office has worked tirelessly to defend human rights and to promote democracy across the OSC area. ODIR has organized, among others, hundreds of seminars, trainings, and campaigns. It has been active in a miscellany of fields, including election, observation, education, tolerance, and non-discrimination, and the rule of law. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking about numbers, so far, ODIR has developed over 300 election ob observation missions and organized 20 human dimension implementing me uh, meetings in Warsaw. This flagship event of the OSC has been a unique platform for discussion on human rights and democracy for almost 25 years. In addition, the meeting has also aimed at assisting all participating states in meetings, their commitments in the human dimension, which civil society having, with civil society having a major voice in the debate. The establishment of ODIR in Warsaw was not only a token of trust, but also acknowledgement of the position of Poland as a country which initiated the democratic changes in Central and Eastern Europe. Warsaw is a symbolic place in which all 57 OSC participating states, irrespective of their historical experience and economic challenges, can meet to discuss timely issues which, with regard to our regional security, political stability, and prosperity, as well as to respect our fundamental rights of our citizens. Currently, we need to adopt a quick decision in Vienna with regard to the HDM 2016. Poland, as the host country for ODIR, is involved in this discussion led by the German chairmanship and is fully determined to reach a sound consensus on this issue as soon as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, on this special occasion, I would like to commend the very able leadership of Director Michael Georg Link and to thank the whole ODIR staff for their excellent work. I would like to wish you every success and satisfaction in your assignments, as well as lots of courage and inspiration for your future endeavors. I would like to assure all of you that Poland fully supports your actions. We are deeply convinced that a major institution promoting respect of human rights and effective democratic institutions, ODIR makes a real difference in, this daily, in the daily life of many citizens of the OSC area. I am fully aware that your work is truly cumbersome at times at, and that you are often faced with the perplexity 
of the current pol political debates among the participating states. However, in my perception, the problem you are facing proves how important is your engagement. Poland has always stood behind you with its firm, firm support of your engagement for democratic institutions and human rights. Warsaw is a place where the human dimension of the cooperation for security in Europe will always be articulated, supported, and strengthened. Thank you very much for your attention. Mr. Minister, Secretary General Sanier, Director Link, Excellencies, distinguished staff members of ODIR, distinguished members of the OSC family, distinguished members of parliament, ladies and gentlemen, Szanowni Państwo. Thank you very much for inviting me to this very important event tonight. It's a great honor and pleasure for me as a representative of Germany, the chair in office of the OSCE this year, 2016. We've gathered here to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights. We're not celebrating only the institution, we're celebrating also the battles that have been won and sometimes not won by your able staff. Oh dear, has had many achievements. It's a great success story. And from the outset, I want to congratulate every staff member, Director Link, of course, first of all, for what you have done and the success story that you have written together. On April 19, 2016, Minister Steinmeier already visited Odia. He praised your important work. What more can a diplomat say after his boss has spoken such a short while ago? Not much, I guess, if not to add that my minister was, of course, right in everything he said. So let's go and have, have, a, nice, have a nice party. But sorry, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid you will have to bear with me a little longer. If we, have, uh, if we look back to the founding period of Odier, the years 1990, uh, 1981 to 1991 were indeed historic. As a then member of Helmut Kohl's staff in the Federal Chancellor's Office, I was privileged to live through these times at, from a close look perspective. I have very fond memories of it. We felt how history accelerated incredibly for a short while. Many things seemed possible. Not every dream became reality. The peoples of Central Europe had just recaptured their place, their rightful place, amongst the community of free nations. Poland, as the frontrunner and trailblazer, had played a special part. In a way, it had paved the way for the Czechs, Slovaks, Hungarians, the Baltics, Bulgarians, Romanians, and also the East Germans to follow. These tremendous changes of Europe revolutionized the transatlantic security architecture. Not only the Conference of Security and Cooperation in Europe turned into the OSCE, the OSCE began to occupy center stage of a new exciting period of European history. The new Polish government under then Prime Minister Tadeusz Mazowiecki, the first non-communist prime minister since 1947, had been at the forefront of these changes. So it was very logical that Warsaw was chosen to host the Office for Free Election as it was initially called. It was established by the Charter of Paris and opened in 1991. In 1992, the office was renamed ODIA to reflect the broadened mandate it received at the 1992 Helsinki Summit. Why is ODIA such an important player in the field of election monitoring and home human rights? According to its mandate, ODIA has to deal with a crucial but difficult task. Strengthening democratic institutions and promoting the respect for human rights, tolerance, non-discrimination, and the rule of law is anything but easy. But your institution, because of the hard work by you, Director Link, and by the dedicated staff, 
has been very much up to this challenge. The founding document of Odia, the Charter of Paris, expressed the vision of a peaceful order in a reunited democratic unit, uh, Europe after the fall of the Iron Curtain. Today, this very post-Cold War security order is seriously challenged. The Charter of Paris, to which all OSC member states have subscribed, is called into question. International law is broken. Not all members share the idea that the fully implementing the OSC principles enhances the security for all of us in the long run. However, in our view, the principles of the Charter of Paris are very relevant today. In fact, they are more important than ever and they need to be observed. But how can this be achieved? Obviously, through dialogue. Dialogue is a key element of cooperation within the OSC. In times when dialogue between governments is difficult, dialogue between civil societies becomes even more important. The human dimension, the so-called third basket, formed an import important part already of the Helsinki document. It is thus already enshrined as a fundamental area of our common security right from the start. And it has grown in influence since then. Today, we know that the protection of fundamental human rights prevents conflict and contributes to maintaining peace and stability. We have come to understand that free and democratic societies help countries to deal with extremism, anti-Semitism, radicalism, and terrorism. Why is ODIA such a successful organization? If ODIA did not exist, it would have to be invented. You, Director Link, and your ABLE staff are outstanding. You have a difficult job which requires personal commitment, stamina, and integrity every day. The protection of human rights is a very worthy cause. You are up against intolerance, self-interest, and the power and influence of interest groups and non-compliant nations. It is about daily battles which you do not win all the time. And that may be the euphemism of the day, I'm afraid. But your struggle pays off for many people who suffer. Your common efforts, the efforts of the ODR staff today, is a beacon of hope for many people. Today, ODR's election observ observation missions have become a real trademark. The regional election in Ukraine in October 2015 has been the 300th successful observation mission of your organizations, if I'm well informed. Election observation contributes to fostering public trust in election processes. It brings about transparency and contributes to legitimize, or even in some cases, delegitimize elections. It is therefore a powerful instrument to secure democratic procedures and to maintain democ democracy in the OSCE area. Germany is proud to be part of this success story. The Center for International Peace, uh, Peace Operations has provided over 4,000 observers for the missions since 2002. This amounts to about 15% of all election observers. Germany is totally committed towards ODIR's efforts. Germany took over as chair in office of the OSCE in stormy times. We will continue to strive for better cooperation in the field of security. We try, do so by trying to make the best use of the OSC existing toolbox and by developing new instruments. We will endeavor to revitalize the OSC as a forum for dialogue and as an anchor for crisis prevention and conflict management. ODIR is one of the most valuable tools in this toolbox. As representative of the chair in office, I would like to assure you of the full support of my government for your difficult task. We stand with you in difficult times and we remain optimistic that your efforts will in the end be successful. We see it in any case a positive element, as a positive element that ODIA budget for 2016 could be secured during difficult negotiations just before the end of last year. And we will support you in other difficult questions like the host country agreement with Poland. And finally, there, is, there seems to be some progress here, but more needs to be done. Germany is also committed to maintain Warsaw as the place for the human dimension implementation meeting in, meeting in September. However, a formula to secure participation from all member states to the event still needs to be worked out. Work out. Mr. Minister, Secretary General Sanir, Director Link, ladies and gentlemen, in, I conc in conclusion, I want, come, want to come back to my minister. 
He was right when he quoted the words of Willy Brandt in the context of the development of the OSCE. Small steps are better than no steps at all. But let's also, not, to a certain extent, this may be part of your mission, st mission statement, but let's also not forget that big leaps forward start with small steps. So I wish you also that the perspective of bigger steps may color your vision for the future. Let me conclude by thanking once again you, Director Link, and your ABLE staff for your important work. I wish you every success, endurance, and determination for the next 25 successful years of ODL in Warsaw. Thank you very much for your attention. Mr. Minister, Secretary General, dear host, Director Link, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to address the 25th anniversary event of the OSC Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights here in Warsaw. This occasion is certainly worth celebrating. Therefore, please accept my warmest congratulations, Director Link. To many, ODIR is best known for its election observation missions. And indeed, within 25 years, the office has grown into the leading election observation institution in the OSC region, as well as an active provider of assistance to governments as well as to civil society. The observation missions are truly a cornerstone or a trademark, which was indicated before, of the organization that we can all be very proud of. ODIA's work is invaluable in many respects, whether promoting uh, the strengthening of democratic institutions and respect for human rights, tolerance, and non-discrimination, or the rule of law. As the chairperson of the OSC Human Dimension Committee, I have been able to follow the work of the office very closely. Director Link, I have told you this before, but please allow me to say it again. I sincerely admire the energy, commitment, skills and expertise of you and your ABLE staff, and we are privileged to work with you um, at the Human Dimension Committee in Vienna. We highly appreciate our smooth collaboration. I wish to thank you for that, including developing ideas together on how to move forward uh, with various important topics and chairmanship priorities in the Human Dimension Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, as the OEC chairperson in office, Minister Frank-Walter Steiermeier has said, respect for human rights and democratic governance are integral components of our joint security. Questioning this would mean discarding what was achieved in Helsinki, Paris, and in Astana. Respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms and their effective implementation and promotion have also direct contribution to a more stable and sustainable security in the OSC area. Simply said, there is no security without human rights. In this respect, the role of the OSC institutions is vital. Growing threats to human rights and fundamental freedoms and the shrinking space for civil society, in particular human rights defenders, are of great concern. On these issues, the engagement and impartial assessments and assistance of ODIR and other OSC autonomous institutions are crucial. After signing the Helsinki Final Act in 1975, the US President Gerald Ford stated that it doesn't matter what promises we make, but what promises we keep. And indeed, a better implementation of human dimension commitments is imperative for all of us and I welcome Odir's constructive role in this regard. In the context of the Human Dimension Committee, I have strongly encouraged delegations to voluntary report on the implementation of our shared commitments. In particular, I have welcomed presentations with lessons learned or still to be learned. I believe that we all need to learn from each other and exchange best practices with the aim of implementing the jointly agreed commitments. Ladies and gentlemen, we owe it to the people 
of all of our 57 participating states to respect and support the mandates of our autonomous institutions. Embodying the principles and commitments upon which the OSCE is founded, they are an important link between those principles and the lives of ordinary people across our region. Any attempts to weaken, uh, any attempts to weaken them or prevent their effective operation undermine not only the OSCE, but also the enjoyment of rights and freedoms of people across our region. The institution's contribution to promoting human rights, as well as to preventing, managing, and resolving conflicts deserve, deserve our full support. Lately, the appointments of heads of the institutions have been facing serious difficulties, and we certainly wish to see a change to this very worrying trend. To conclude, I wish to reiterate my, as well as my government's, strong support for Odi's work. Respect for human rights is at the center of the OSC's comprehensive concept of security. Protection of human rights is also key to stability, equality, and prosperity, and we must defend it and, and strengthen it. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish you an enjoyable evening. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you. And now we would have the pleasure to invite you in the courtyard where we will meet uh, for the more informal part and the musical part. Thank you very much.